Hey, what's up, you guys? Just kind of reflecting on just just everything that that God has brought me through in my life um, as a musician, and so I'm grateful, you know, for God for blessing me with such great opportunities over the years. And here I am now at 31 years old, and I'm still grateful, and I'm grateful for what God is doing now in my life, you know, and so. Just wanted to share with you guys just a little bit about, you know, just just some of the things that God had to, to take me through um, as a musician, as a working musician. And so I'm just grateful to God for just how he how he trusted me with with this gift. And I made a promise to him that I would never, ever let him down, that I would do the best that I can to make sure that he gets all glory in everything I do, you know, and to make the best music that I can, you know, not to be better than anyone else, but to just do my personal best, my level best, you know? And so I remember um, back in my former ministry, um, when I was growing up, um, I grew up in an apostolic faith church and um, my experience there um, was amazing. Um, it taught me so much. And that experience alone showed me a whole new way of having church, you know? Because I remember when I was younger, when me and my mother would what we call church hop. Um, just looking for that one ministry that can be our our nesting ground, you know, for us to pretty much settle down, for us to pretty much, you know, receive what it is that God, you know, wants us to, to take from it. And at the same time, to be able to contribute as far as, you know, the gifts and talents that he has blessed us with, you know. And so, and so traveling from church to church when I was growing up, um, hearing a lot of different musicians, particularly older musicians. And so some of the churches that we went to were pretty much, you know, very old school, you know, makes you feel like you're back in the 1970s or the 1960s, you know, where the music is like, you know, these kind of, these kind of old school churches have that, you know, older man or older woman playing the piano. And the music sounds like something from the James Cleveland days and from the Mahalia Jackson days. And no disrespect to them, you know, I'm grateful for these artists, you know, because they have paved the way for, for all of us. You know, they have paved the way for artists like the Hawkins family. They have paved the way for artists like Andre Crouch and for Richard Smallwood and Thomas Whitfield, you know, and, and going into the 90s with Hezekiah Walker and Donald Lawrence and... Um, so many, so many wonderful artists, Fred Hammett, Kirk Franklin, the list just goes on and on and on, man, you know, um, Alanda Draper, God rest his soul, you know, Yolanda Adams, you know, the Clark sisters, of course, you know, and so all these artists, you know, and so I'm, I'm so grateful for each and every one of them because each has paved the way for, for people of my generation, you know, for us to come in and, you know, contribute what it is that we have to bring to the table as well, you know, so I'm grateful for that. And so... And so my experience just traveling from church to church with my mother during that time, um, it was pretty interesting. And it was around like, I would say like 1998, I think around, somewhere around the late nineties where we settled upon this apostolic ministry. And um, being there was just, it was a brand new experience for me because I've never seen a ministry like this before. And the churches I was going to prior to that didn't have church like that because it was just, you know, it was just old school. It was a black church, but it felt like a white church, you know, but, but this ministry in particular was, you know, man, you know, when you talk about apostolic faith, you know, and how we get down and all that stuff, you know, um, you're talking about a ministry that, you know, that is really into, to jumping and shouting and worshiping God, you know, intensely and passionately and, you know, and just the atmosphere there and, you know, and the choir sounding great and everything, the band jamming and all that stuff and just the atmosphere there was just amazing. And so 
And, and so being there, God has really blessed me to be able to to be there and to and to be able to contribute what it is that God has put inside of me, you know, and for him to really, you know, allow me to, to be part of, to be part of the music ministry. And at the same time, you know, um, being mentored, you know, being taken aside, you know, and just learning the ropes, you know, learning about the do's and don'ts and things like that. And, um, and it has really helped me tremendously. And around Around I would say um, 2013, I think it was 2013, where where it was clear to see that my season there was was coming to an end, and so we had to find another ministry where we can take what it is that God put inside of us and to be able to to put to use, to be able to exercise, and be able to demonstrate, you know, everything that God has put inside of us as far as you know the gifts that he's put inside of us and the knowledge and things like that. And so I remember um, we tried going to um, different ministries, trying to find another ministry where we can really be of use, you know, and really, you know, share the information that we've acquired with somebody else, you know. And so um, I remember, um, and in between, I was doing some outreach work as well, um, working with a, a youth choir and... Um, and that experience was, it was a great experience. It only lasted for about two years. And the reason why was because um, I love working with kids and I was doing everything that I can to help the kids get excited about making music and making music for God, you know, and to just have fun and just be young, you know, and to just, you know, just have a great time. And so some of my peers that I was working alongside with, some of the older people who I was working alongside with, looked at me as if I was trying to take over or be in the spotlight, if you will, you know? And so, you know, and so it would be things, they would give me looks like, like, man, who does this guy think he is, you know? Like, where did he come from, you know? And so, and all that stuff, you know? And so it really hurt me, you know, because they pretty much turned against me, you know, and and it really hurt me. But I'm just so grateful to God that, you know, you know, what better gift can God bless you with than the gift of forgiveness, you know, and I'm grateful to God that he softened my heart because um because because I did get angry, you know, but but God spoke to me like, calm down, calm down, relax, don't stoop to their level, you know, be bigger than that, be better than that, you know, and so and so that's what really helped me, you know, because I dealt with people who, you know, had, I I could never understand the kind of disdain that they had for me, you know, I dealt with people who had such disdain and such jealousy, you know, and, and I, and I never wanted to make anyone jealous, you know, I was just there to just help and just contribute what it is that I had to bring to the table and to just be a teammate, you know, and, you know, I just didn't understand why, you know, why some of my peers were, were jealous of me and intimidated by me, you know, because, be, because I wasn't there to try to take over or try to be in the spotlight. No, I was just there to be a team member and to just contribute what it is that God has put inside of me, you know, to just present what it is that I have to bring to the table. That's all, you know? And so, and so for me, um, as a musician, as a working musician, you know, when, when God blessed me with opportunities to be able to play, you know, with different groups, you know, and, and, and to be able to go to different regions around the East Coast, particularly the East Coast area. And so um, and so traveling from town to town to city to city along the East Coast um, and just doing, you know, and just doing these engagements, these events, these concerts and church fun functions where, you know, where sometimes you get paid, um, sometimes you would just get, you know, a chicken dinner 
or get enough money to treat everybody to like pot pies or McDonald's or Burger King, you know. And so, um, and, and so I learned that, you know, that the grind, you know, what we call the grind and how it's not easy, how it's not always easy. And so, um, and if I can go back, you know, um, my former ministry um, that I played for, um, they couldn't afford to pay me. And during that time, I didn't care if they paid me or not, you know, because during that time, I was just having fun. You know, I played because I love to play. You know, you're talking about a kid who who was waiting on the front pews, looking at the keyboards to give me that nod to come on up here and play, you know, and I'm like, when is it my turn? I want to play. I want to play, you know, and so I was just excited to play because I love to play, you know, and so the thought of getting paid, you know, never crossed my mind. And looking back, I realized that during that time, during, you know, those times of me just having fun and just enjoying myself and just being young, you know, during that time, I realized that God was grooming me. And I remember I posted a video on here before talking about how important it is to be nice about getting a check. You know, when somebody gives you a check, be nice about it, you know, be humble about it, you know. And so it really taught me to just be humble, you know, to be nice, you know, when, you know, when, when people can afford to pay you, you know, be nice, you know, say thank you, you know, and don't be like it's a pleasure doing business with you because I believe that once you say it's a pleasure doing business with you, you know, there's a good chance that you're not going to come back and that you're not going to be in relation with those people anymore, you know, and so I definitely don't believe that, you know, I believe in forming relationships with people, you know, on and off the instrument, you know, on and off stage, if you will, you know, so it's important to develop, you know, relationships, working relationships, you know, not just working relationships, but also personal relationships as well, you know, because it extends much more than just, you know, than just ministry or just business, you know, it's a personal thing for me, you know, and so when God began to bless me with the opportunity to get paid, you know, I was grateful and, you know, I said thank you and everything and, you know, and I would say, hey, man, you know, I'm looking forward to us doing it again. Let's do it again. You know, this is fun. You know, this is the most fun I've had in years, you know, and all that stuff, you know. And so that's the thing. You know, you want to form personal relationships, you know. And so that's the thing. Not just working relationships, not just business relationships, but also, you know, personal relationships as well. And so that's important. And now to fast forward, you know, um, with my current situation right now, um, I remember um, four years ago, um, since 2016, um, I started playing for this for this ministry, a Baptist ministry, um, through the recommendation of my uncle, who was a preacher, who was a new reverend during that time, and he told me about this ministry, and um, and the pastor's son during that time was injured. Um, he was a musician, he was also an athlete, he loved sports and everything, played sports and all that, but he was injured. And so um, I had to fill in, and he requested me to fill in for him. And and I agreed, and um, went there, started playing, um, the people loved it, and um, I was able to get paid for that. Um, the, so, the, so for the first couple months, it was okay, but it wasn't until I began to learn, you know, what what this ministry is, you know, and, you know, just, and after a while, I just started to really grow uncomfortable, you know, because it was a Baptist ministry and, um, black church, but, you know, um, whenever I would go in on, and, you know, sometimes it would feel like I'm in a white church, you know, it's a black church, but it's a white church at the same time, you know, because nobody stood up and clapped their hands, nobody danced, nobody grooved or anything like that, you know, and, you know, and for me, I'm very high energy, you know, and so for me, you know, I want to give God my personal best, you know, it's just that spirit of David in me, you know, just the, just that desire to just get up and dance and just glorify God and just give my all, just give it 100%. You know, and so whether I'm playing or whether I'm standing up at a microphone, you know, I want to give God my personal best, my level best, 
you know, because he deserves the best, you know, I'm grateful for everything that he's done for me, you know, as far as him giving me life, health, and strength, you know, the least I can do is just give him something in return, you know, and so, and so, and so that was pretty much me, you know, just giving God something in return, like, hey, God, you know, I, I appreciate you for everything you've done in my life, I just want to give you something in return, and this is for you, you know, and I want to give you the best that I have, you know, and so that's the thing, you know, and so, anything, you know, when God has done something wonderful for you in your life, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta show your gratitude, you know, like, hey, Lord, you know, I appreciate you for what you've done for me. And this is for you. I want to give you something in return. This is from my heart to you, you know, and so that's the thing, you know. And so for me, um, coming from a, coming from a culture where there's a lot of, you know, shouting and dancing and all that stuff and, and worship and things like that, and, you know, and, and, and this ministry in particular, where you get a program every Sunday telling you that praise and worship starts at this time, and then you go to the master ceremony, then you do this, then you do that, and then the choir and all that stuff, and the offering, then the choir again, and then the preach word and all that stuff. And so everything was pretty much rigidly planned, you know. And so there was there was no room for the Holy Spirit to just have his way because everything was so structured. Everything was so controlled. Everything was dictated by the clock, you know. And so and so it was difficult. It was difficult. And, you know, and at the same time, there were no young people my age because it was pretty much older people. And so when you're in an atmosphere where, where you know, where, where you're the only one of your generation in a sea of of older people you feel like an outcast you feel like you feel like you can't be yourself you know and you feel like you gotta you know dumb down some things you know in order to appease them and that was a very uncomfortable position for me you know and um and so for four years and um and during that time around 2018 um I had a job for four years, from 2015 to 2018. I worked at a fast food restaurant. And so that was a great experience because it really, you know, I was able to learn so much information, you know, from that, where I can apply that information to the stuff I do musically. Because, you know, um, when it comes to music, much like working in a fast food restaurant, you gotta meet the people's needs because each and every person has a different need. Each and every person, you know, has a different, you know, has a different appetite for something. Same thing for music, you know. And so when you're working with, you know, independent artists or choirs or things like that, you know, each requires a different style, a different flavor, you know. And so you want to be able to, you know, give them what it is that they want, what it is that they're looking for. And so, and so that's one of the things I learned. And so for me, you know, growing up as a musician, I didn't just learn things as a pianist, as a keyboardist. I didn't just learn all things keyboard. No, you know, I learned as much as I can about how to play with a band, you know, and so how I learned how to play with a band is I do keyboard sequencing. And so whether I'm arranging, um, whether I'm arranging a cover piece or writing a song, you know, and so with me doing keyboard sequencing, that was pretty much my training in learning how to play in a band because each and every person in a band has a role to play. The keyboardist has a role, the organist has a role, the drummer, you know, the bass player, all these different elements, you know, all these different elements, you know, to bring a song to life, you know, and so, and so I learned as much as I can, you know, I learned as much information as I can about music, about, you know, about being a leader as far as the musical director side of me, and how th that was really developing, and so just learning, you know, just learning different things, you know, as a music director and learning, you know, things as it pertains to, you know, playing with a band and how to structure a song, you know, and how to really, you know, build, you know, a song, things like that, you know. And so I've learned, I've learned a lot, you know, and still learning today, you know. And so, and so that's the thing, you know, I really started to really take it very seriously. And so around 2018, you know, um, at after frustration of trying to look for another job and I'm like and I'm like lord what am I doing you know am I here just to go to school am I here just to go to church am I here just to get a traditional 9 to 5 like everyone else you know what am I here for 
what am I doing here? You know, my mother birthed me into this world for something. And so, and so God told me, you know, this is why you're here. You're here to use your gift for my glory and to make a difference. And so that's, that's why I knew, that's why I knew I'm here to glorify God with the gift that he's given me. And at the same time, to be able to contribute something to the world, you know, as it pertains to the gifts that he's given me, you know, and so to be able to inspire people and to be able to encourage people through the power of music and through the power of, of the word, you know, and so I'm grateful to God, you know, and I, and I definitely don't want to let him down, you know, because there's somebody out there listening. There's one man one woman out there listening, boy or girl, there's somebody out there who is listening. And so, and so I'm grateful to God that he has, you know, entrusted me, you know, to be able to do this, you know, and I don't want to let him down. I don't ever want to let him down. And so around 2018, that's when I really decided to take music seriously. And so, um, and so, of course, you have to deal with, you know, your family and your friends telling you, hey, man, you know, this may not work out for you. So don't get your hopes up too high. You know, you may have to you may have to do something else because this may not work out for you. And so for me, you know. And so for me. When you really want to do something, you know, when you really believe in your heart that this is what you're meant to do, then you got to stick with it. Regardless, no matter what anybody says, you know, your friends may not understand it, your family may not understand it, and that's okay, you know, whether they support you or not, just follow your heart, you know, they may not understand it at first, but, you know, it may take some, it may take them some time to understand it, but what's important is making sure that you follow your heart, that you know what you're doing, you know, focusing on what makes you happy, you know, you can spend years and years and years trying to appease other people, but what are you doing for yourself? You know, you're busy trying to make other people happy, but are you really happy with yourself? You know, are you okay? You know, what are you doing for yourself? You know, and so that's where I was at. You know, what am I doing for myself? I'm doing all this other, I'm doing all this stuff for other people. I'm doing all this stuff for churches. I'm doing all this stuff for, for my parents. But what am I doing for me? What am I doing for Rodney Skinner? What am I doing for me? You know, and you know, and some people would deem you to be selfish, but you know, I, this is this is my thing right here. This is why I believe. You know, if you can't take care of yourself, how can you take care of somebody else? You know, if you can't take care of yourself, if you can't keep yourself in check, how can you take care of somebody else? All the reason why self-care is essential, you know, and so that's the thing, you know, and so, and so around 2018, I'm like, you know what, you know what, Lord, I'm doing all this for everyone else, but, but, you know, what am I doing for myself, you know, and so I need to do things for myself, you know, and so if I don't, then, you know, I'm not going to go anywhere, I'm not I'm not going to achieve anything, you know, and I want to achieve the things that you have for me. I want to get the things that you have for me, you know, and so that's where I was at, you know, in my life. And so that's why I decided to really take music seriously and knowing that, you know, and even with that, you know, I knew that, you know, even as I, even as I'm doing this, you know, that there will be times where I will get gigs, get opportunities where I'll sometimes get paid, you know, some opportunities I'll get paid for, some opportunities I'll just get a chicken dinner, you know. And so and and so for me, you know, I believe that you got to have that toughness in here. You got to be mentally tough and you got to be spiritually tough, you know. You got to have that mental toughness saying that saying that I'm going to do this and I believe that there is something at the end of the rainbow, that there's a pot of gold for me at the end of the rainbow, if you will, you know. And so I believe that God has something for me if I stick with it, you know. And and that's the thing, you know. And so, 
And so the scripture says, you know, to press, you know, press, press forward towards the mark, you know, to the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, you know. And so once you stay focused, you know, once you stay tough in here, once you stay mentally tough, you know, believing that I'm going to do this and whatever happens, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. Because I believe that God has something for me at the end of the rainbow, you know, and so, and so you got to be mentally tough and you got to be spiritually tough, believing that God is with you, believing that God is with you every step of the way, you know, when people, you know, when people come and people go, you know, and so God promised that he will always be with me, you know, and I'm so grateful that God, you know, there's no better friend, there's no better father, there's no better lover than God, you know, and I'm so grateful for God, for how he promised that he would never leave me nor forsake me, and that he will always be with me, even until the end, you know, and I'm so grateful for that, you know, and so, and so, when God places it upon your heart, when God has given you, when God has placed a demand on your life, you got to be obedient, you know, when God, when God tells you, I want you to do this, I want you to do this, you know, when God tells you that, you got to be obedient to his voice. When God speaks, you got to listen, you got to be obedient, you know, and so, you know, again, you know, sometimes your friends and your family may not understand, you know, but, you know, if God speaks to you personally and you know that it's him, you got to obey his voice. You got to obey his voice, you know? And so for me, I choose to be obedient to his voice. When God tells me something, I'm going to be obedient. You know, other people may not understand it. You know, it just depends on how in tune in the spirit that you are, you know, it ju just depends how spiritually sensitive you are, you know? And so, and so that's the thing, you know, you know, when God places something for you, when God places something upon your life, you know, when God, you know, gives you a goal to achieve, you know, you got to be mentally tough and you got to be spiritually tough because, you know, the grind is not easy. The grind is not easy as a musician. You know, some gigs you'll get paid, you know, some get some gigs you'll just get a chicken dinner, but you got to be tough. You got to be tough in order to get what you want. You know, that doesn't mean be a jerk, you know, be kind to people, you know, love people, you know, be nice, you know, and at the same time, be driven, be driven, you know, this is something that God has put inside of me, and I believe it, I believe it, you know, and so, and so that's the thing, you know, and so no matter how things are, stay committed, stay committed, you know, the budget might be low, stay committed. You might only get $50, stay committed. You might be treated to Popeyes or, Mc, or McDonald's, stay committed. You got to stay committed. You know, and so you got to be persistent. You got to stay persistent. And God will honor you based upon your persistence, based upon how much you trust him. And so I truly believe that. I truly believe that. And so, and so you guys pray for me even at this point in my life where I'm really, you know, where I'm really working hard, um, you know, not just having fun with my gift, but, but really putting in the work, you know, as I'm working with bands, as I'm, you know, as I'm working with bands and just, you know, presenting what it is that I have to bring to the situation to take, to take the group to another level, you know, and so... And so that's the thing, you know, and so you guys pray for me, you know, I truly believe this and, you know, it's all for the glory of God, not for Rodney's glory, but for the glory of God alone. That's all I want to do is, is please God and just give the best that I have, you know, and so, and at the same time, you know, encourage one person and inspire someone else, you know, to give the best that they have because we're all in this together, you know. We are all in this together. Each and every one of us has something to contribute. 
to make a difference in the kingdom and make a difference in our world. And so that's pretty much what I want to share with you. Um, may God bless you. May God keep you, you know, keep pushing forward into greatness. No matter who you are, keep pushing forward because God has something for you in the end. If you stay persistent, if you stay tough, you know, if you stay confident and at the same time be humble, you know, if you stay committed, God's going to bless you. And so that's why I believe. And so hopefully you guys got something out of this. May God bless you. May God keep you. You guys take care. Peace.